Railroads have served the world time and time again. And the railroad here was no different. In January of 1890, the first step was taken into the establishment of service here at George School. It would later be found out that without the railroad, George School would never exist. For 107 years, a railroad station was located at George School until 1983. Every day, food and coal would be delivered to the campus to keep it running. The coal used to be put on the trestle, which had coal bins below, which is now used for compost today. School got built here because of the railroad. Um, if you want to build a school in the 1890s, people and supplies are all going to come and go by rail. So you needed to be someplace where there was railroad transportation. There's also an old structure that was the signal to the engineer that somebody wanted to get on the train at George School. This was what was called a flag stop. It's still called that, although there aren't flags anymore. But you'd, ha you'd raise this little flag, a balloon kind of, on a tower, and the engineer would see that from a distance, and that would tell him somebody wants to get on the train. The original station that cost $3,000 was destroyed by a fire in April of 1905 by thieves. The railroad company decided to put a coach on the side until another station would be brought from another station to replace it. The bridge was destroyed in 1904 and was replaced with the steel bridge that is there today. In February of 1899, a severe snowstorm blocked the railroads for seven days at George School and it later left George School with a minimum amount of food. The train out here used to be the way that George School students went to football games when we played ANC, which used to be called Bryn Athen Academy, or when they came here. Uh, the, the, our line goes through Bryn Athen, Huntington Valley, uh, past Beth Ayers, and it connects at uh, Fox Chase to lines that still operate. The Fox Chase line still operates within Philadelphia. Another story about the railroad was on a spring afternoon in 1932 when George Walton's cousin, Aubrey Walton, decided to find out what would happen if the toilet inside the train station was attached to the train by a rope. The toilet was ripped out of the train station and bounced along the tracks all the way to Newtown. Consequently, he did not receive his diploma with his classmates. A frequent uh, little trick by George School students that they liked to do was to grease the rails. Because if they greased the rails, um, railroads work so well because there's not a lot of friction. And if you grease them, there's none. And so trains had trouble either getting up the hill in the new town or stopping on the way down the hill from Newtown. By the, uh, 1978, 80 or so, um, there were 18 Bud rail diesel cars in the SEPTA fleet and 16 of them didn't work. And the last two that did work were the ones doing all the travel between Newtown and Fox Chase until literally, at least this is the story I've been told, one day the train was coming out from Philadelphia and the crew operating it realized that the, some of the brake equipment had fallen off the train, had just dropped off. Uh, at Beth Ayers, about halfway to Philly. Um, and so when they got to Newtown and stopped the train, they, they couldn't do anything else, and they called headquarters and buses came out, and that was literally the end of um, the rail service 